My name is Donald Yaks, and I was born at 616 East Sibley Street in Hull, Michigan, on August 28, 1925. I remember um, well, most of my teachers. Uh, Hull wasn't really a city back in those days. It was just a small town. Lots of things to do, uh, simple things that were entertaining, like uh, the beach down at the lake, down at Hull Lake was a big activity in the summer. The lake, the whole lake was active. In the winter, there was ice fishing, a lot of ice fishing, and um, uh, I never could ice skate, I never could stand up on them. But uh, uh, there was there was always something to do. Fishing, all go fishing all summer down there and catch little bluegills and perch and but that was uh, that was kind of simple entertainment, but it was satisfying. The only theater was the present one. Uh, the opera house was all kind of forgotten. Uh, Grand River, of course, was the only main road east and west. All the big trucks and, of course, back in those days we thought they were big. They weren't big compared to today, but uh, uh, all the trucks. I can remember as a kid we picked up an old counter uptown in the alley someplace and we took it over and set it up and made a jar of lemonade right on by the curb, uh, about four blocks from downtown. And uh, you'd be surprised the truckers that would stop and buy a glass of lemonade from us. <laughs> so I can remember the, the old church that sat on the corner of McCarthy and Sibley Street. Ford Garage used it to store cars in. And then when the freezer came along, remember they froze meat and packaged it in wax and had lockers you could rent to keep your meat in? Uh, they had those in that old church building. Uh, then across the street where the laundry was, where Kadurko's laundry was, there was an old barn there and I can always remember on the front of the barn it said, Hal Irwin Training Stables. Uh, at, apparently at one time in the day of horses, why that he had something to do with training horses. Uh, then just around the corner was Carl Wangmaster's blacksmith shop. And I can remember as a kid watching him pound away on that anvil and heat his iron with his bellows. Um, he lived on the corner in the house and he had his blacksmith shop, which was uh, an old barn that uh, he used to do his blacksmith work in. On the um, northeast corner was a large building that um, this one was a commercial building, and it uh, uh, seems like they had a farm equipment business, but this one was just a large building, uh, but the uh, um, Deutsches had a Studebaker dealership there at one time, and then John Proctor had a hardware store there. Uh, I think after that, after John Proctor left, I think. No, I remember going in that building once to buy my car license. What was your first car? My first car was a, an old Chevrolet car. It was a, it wouldn't go very fast. You couldn't do any damage with it. <laughs> it pretty much ran all the time though. Uh, Oh, let's see, what else? You remember the old Methodist church? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to church there. Um, 
then on the um, across the street there where the post office is was just a vacant lot, just an empty lot. Do you have any information on the old 10 cent barn? That's set on the corner of Walnut Street and Clinton Street. That was an old rickety wooden frame building and it had stalls in it. And I guess when people came to town, that's where they would park their horses uh, while they were shopping or doing. And where the locksmith, that was just an empty lot. And across the, across the street from locksmith, where Holkins lumberyard was, there was a big house on the corner that was a rooming house. Um, it came, came up to the sidewalk on both sides, but it was a, um, uh, a rooming house. A lot of the uh, single older men lived in there. And then next to it, north, was the uh, co-op feed mill. And they eventually built a store there. And uh, Holkins Lumber was there as long as I ever remember. On the south side of Clinton Street was a feed mill. Um, what was the name of that? Peavy's was on the corner and this one was behind it. <laughs> I also remember the story once, Joyce. I don't know who, who the policeman was or anything, but at that time, the street took quite a dip and the railroad track came up beside that mill. And uh, they claim that uh, the police were chasing somebody <laughs> down that street and they hit the railroad track so hard <laughs> that it damaged the front end of their car. <laughs> I, I don't remember uh, any names. I, at the time, I remember who they were chasing, but uh, uh, that stopped the chase right there. <laughs> Russell D. Smith, he uh, originally was on the, were Cousins Glasses. And also, uh, uh, after he left, there was a, um, Don Main had his Cadillac business in there. Did you have any part of putting the wagon on top of the... No, no, I never. That was... Uh, I was too young for that, to get into that yet. Do you know who did it? Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> but, you know, Joyce, the old school, remember the old high school? Uh -huh. Out in the back, they had what they called a pit. You went down about four or five steps and then went into the back door of the building. But I can remember also at Halloween time, they would fill that pit with old junk cars. There was a, um, we call it a junkyard, but right over by on, um, uh, oh, that's the street that runs uh, north and south. Barnard Street, Barnard Street. You know where the Purdue Nordriff Lumber Company? Uh -huh. Okay, right beside that, on the north side, Phil had a junkyard. He dealt in old scrap metal and stuff. Uh, the kids would go over there and haul those old junk cars out and take them up and put them in that pit. <laughs> they didn't do any damage. It was just nuisance, you know, but uh, fun. Well, at one time, that building came right out to the sidewalk and they had gas pumps right at the curb, the old pump ones. And that was a um, Plymouth Chrysler dealership. And a gas station? Yeah, mm-hmm. Uh, I also remember um, the alley that goes behind the buildings on uh, Grand River where the blacksmith shop was. They had quite a steep ramp that went from the street up into the alley. And somebody parked their car there and the car went away and it rolled across the street and went right through the doors on that building that belonged to Annie Hall. 
<laughs> roll right through the doors. <laughs> oh yeah, that's an old, old building. But they took the front section off and put drive-in gas pumps there when they modernized it. But uh, um, then on the corner of uh, Barnard and Grand River, on the southeast corner, or the southwest corner, there were two houses and then the theater. Uh, one of those houses, they moved down on uh, Little Short Street between Clinton and, um, I don't know, can't name the other street. They moved one there, and the other one they moved down on Almond Street, and then they built the uh, IGA grocery store there. Harold Crandall lived in the first house. He, he was a realtor. Then he bought the house across the street where Griffith is, and they moved these houses. Uh, but those houses have been well maintained. I mean, they also down on the corner of um, Elm Street and Grand River, there were two houses there. And they moved those houses over on Barnard Street, right by the railroad track. At one time, that was a vacant lot, and an outfit called Lee and Katie built a Quonset hut there, and that was a grocery distributor. And when they quit, then Purdy and Woodruff apparently bought that building, and they used that for their finished lumber. And then somebody bought it from Purdy and Woodruff and moved those two houses there. And that was interesting. Uh, I watched them move those houses, and they put them on this trailer, and they drove them right down Grand River to Barnard Street, and they had the basements all dug, and they backed that truck right up beside the basement, and they slid those houses off onto those basements. Just, I mean, it was a, absolutely amazing to see how simple they made move those great big houses. Uh, west, the first house, the brick house there, was uh, uh, Doc Irwin. He was a veterinary. And he had a brother, um, oh, he, but he had taxi. But he was a short man, and he had real humped over. And uh, uh, but Doc had his veterinary uh, hospital in the garage behind the house. But uh, that's where he had his veterinary business. And um, next to that was the. Um, you ever remember Fern Schultz? She had her. Did they call it colonnade restaurant in that house? Then, of course, there was the gas station on the corner, the gas station across from that. Uh, you remember the old gas names, Dixie Gas and High Speed Gas? Uh, what were the others? Uh, Sunoco, of course. Uh, uh, but uh, there were all kinds of gas stations around with names that are forgotten. <laughs> well, on the west side was a Sunoco gas station. Uh, and then there was uh, kind of a little house, and then there was one on the corner. Um, let's see, right around the corner, Earl Sharp. You've heard of Earl Sharp. He lived there, but they moved his house up on um, uh, Byron Road a ways. I can't tell you exactly the location of it, but they moved that house so they can make a parking lot there. Uh, and then there was Violet Dunning. She had that whole backyard there between all the houses, and she raised all her bulbs or, or uh, flowers and stuff there. Yep.
Next to it, Joyce, was a beautiful house. I mean, it was a brick house and had a mansard roof on it. I mean, it was just, a, a, in my eyes today, it was just an outstanding house for the city of Howell. But they tore that down so they could build that rec center there. Well, the, the, the one on, um, on the corner of Grand River and um, what's the other street? Huh, I, I, I can't name the streets. Anyway, that Hiram, Smilt, Hiram Smith built that house. He was an attorney and he was eventually a, I think he was a judge. I don't know what class judge he was, but he built that house. And then next door to it were um, uh, Paul Rogers lived. I don't know who originally owned that house. But then um, Charlie Sutton, you've certainly heard of him, he lived next one. And uh, Van Winkle, Don Van Winkle, he lived in the next one. Uh, the next one were, um, I think it's, um, one of the white boys lives. I don't know who lived there. But then on the corner of Byron Road and um, Grand River, where the big house is, that was Fred Teeple lived there. And Fred was a realtor. Oh, you know, uh, the house my folks lived in belonged to a man by the name of Fishbeck. And he was a great promoter in the Holstein Cone. Holstein cow importing them from England. And they, uh, they built up a uh, uh, registered herd. Uh, and that, that was a big thing in Livingston County. They had a membership and uh, they had meetings, I guess, in the house. They, matter of fact, there was a barn out behind the house and that barn still had the tack hooks in it. The fairgrounds, that was a big event. The railroad was always there, even the fairgrounds. I can remember standing there watching the uh, uh, big locomotive uh, sitting there waiting to sidetrack or something, yeah. And then the, at one time, that railroad track went right straight across Grand River. There was no Vidocter or anything. Uh, it just went across the road. Yeah, and then I, I can remember when they built the viaduct out there. That was, oh, that was a big deal. You know, they didn't have equipment then like they have nowadays, and they dug and <laughs> had trucks out there, and they had the route, the um, Grand River routed around uh, the edge of on the uh, north side. Of course, every Weekend, as when I got a little older, I'd go out to the golf club, the country club, and caddy. Shimon Hill? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, got 35 cents for carrying a guy's bag for nine holes. Once in a while, they'd give you 50 cents. <laughs> Some of those bags are pretty heavy, too. Oh, sure, I worked up there when I was in school. Uh, during the summer months, for two years, I worked up there uh, washing dishes and milk bottles. <laughs> my, uh, my boss was Russ Beeman, and uh, uh, he was a cook, but I think he was kind of a... Yeah, at that time, you didn't care who was your boss or anything. You went in, he did your job. And, <laughs> uh, uh, I also remember I, I always kind of dreaded when they had eggs for breakfast because you know how hard eggs are to wash off of dishes? <laughs> I never got to see the works up there, but you know, they had tunnels that went from the hospital over to the living quarters, mm -hmm. and uh, I never got to see any of that. But uh, at the time I worked up there, they still had the dairy farm. Uh, they produced all their own milk. When we did the history of the sand, um, because that was the Adirondack 
architecture that was used. Yeah, yeah. You know, the brilliance to me of making, I call them hallways, but tunnels yeah. between the buildings made so much sense because a doctor, if he had to get somewhere, yeah. was not yeah. shoveling a path yeah. to get there. And yeah. to, to deliver the meals and between buildings, it was just amazing to me. They, uh, uh, yeah, I never saw that part of it. Uh, of course, in between breaks, we were kids, we were all selling yard fooling around, you know, we weren't interested in tunnels or anything. <laughs> Can remember once, Joyce, they used to have a gate at the foot of the hill where you turn off of County Farm Road to go up to the sanatorium. They used to have a guardhouse there and a chain across the road, so you, I, I don't know why, but you had to identify yourself if you wanted to go up there. But I always remember a fellow that lived up there, had a bicycle, and he came down that hill and he stopped the rear wheel, braked it, and he, he slid the rubber right off that rear tire he skidded so far. <laughs> From my time there, back there on the um, uh, north east corner of Grand River National was a house with a gas station on the front of it. And then next door there, that was Ginsburg's junkyard, junkyard, you know. At, uh, right there in Grand River in yeah, mm -hmm, yeah. Matter of fact, the story goes that uh, uh, some fellow drove through Howell and got to Fowlerville and he stopped and wanted to know where Howell was. And he said, oh, you just went through it. Oh, he said, I thought that was Ginsburg because they had a big sign out in front, you know. Uh, Abe's glasses. Oh, okay. Actually, Abe was Ginsburg. Great. They just kept using the name. But uh, uh, they had, there were two hoses there. And then the uh, gas station was on the corner. They finally tore the old house down and built a gas station. That was just vacant property. There used to be a big barn sitting up there, kind of up on the hill, and the guys would go up there and play basketball in the barn. And the corner of the um, south west corner of National and Grand River was just a vacant lot. I mean, when you got there, you were out of town. Or you remember the A and W? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the first. Uh, drive-in in, in town. Doc Huntington, he was famous for delivering babies, and Dr. Hill, uh, let's see, Dr. Brown, who was in, and we had a lady doctor that was in where Griffiths Real Estate is, Dr. Brigham, yep. Uh, Oh, there must have been some others, but uh, Doc Hill and Sigler, they were kind of the, and Dr. Huntington, they were kind of the leading. They had the old hospital where the bank is, you know. Yeah, I remember that real well. They had an old great big round chute, which was a fire escape. So uh, they could put people in there and they'd slide down it if they ever had a fire. <laughs> if you look, you'll see remnants of it. But there's a stairway now that go, Peter Winkle lives upstairs in his building, and he does have a stairway going up to the second floor from the back. At one time, the first national bank was down next to the dime store. Let's see, was it between the dime, I think it was between the dime store and the uh, family restaurant. It was not a very large building. But they, the bank was in there, and they had a fire. And uh, right at that time, they merged with First State and Savings, which was on the corner where they are now. And so they, they moved up there. Banking was completely different back in those days, you know. Uh, the, the president usually was very visible. Uh, uh, George was a, 
uh, oh, I don't know exactly how to say, he was a good guy. Uh, and his, his had, he had his office right there where he could see anybody that came in and he was always visible. But George used to, uh, uh, he was an early riser. And lots of times he'd be waiting at my front door at the store just to stop in and visit for a while. Yeah, Swan store. That just was uh, crowded. You had to go through it sideways, but boy, they had everything. They sold good shoes and they sold good outdoor wear. Uh, but um, what a shame that uh, uh, the the internet had to come along and the big stores and uh, just ruin the old prestige of going in and shopping and buying something. I worked in the store uh, when I was a kid, kind of learning how to fix things. Uh, then I, when I went in the service, uh, uh, when I got out, why well, I um, went into the store full time. And I went to watchmaker school for a year. Uh, then in uh, 1953, my dad decided he was ready to quit, so I bought the store from him. And this is kind of interesting because uh, I had borrowed money from my dad to build my house, the first house up the street here. And uh, so uh, I wanted to borrow enough money to pay the house and the store off so I would just have one payment to make. Um, <laughs> I went over to First National Bank and asked them, and uh, they said, well, they, they would have to take it up with their board of directors. So I went over to McPherson Bank, and uh, I think it was Bill II, and I said, Bill, I need to borrow some money. I want to pay my dad off. And, okay, how much you want? And he fixed me up right there. <laughs> No, no paper. You know, nowadays you go through that many papers to get any kind of loan, but it was so simple. Yep. Back in those days, they knew. They, you knew. They, they knew your history. Uh, nowadays, uh, nobody knows your history. There's so many people, and uh, they do so many different things that uh, it's just understandable. I mean, they have to protect themselves. My dad bought that from. Larkin and Kruger, they both had grocery stores downtown. And uh, they owned that store and my dad bought it from him. I can't tell you exactly what year it was. Uh, and then I bought the store from my mother after my dad passed away. And uh, um, then I sold it. <laughs> I built all the showcases and uh, yeah, all the trim work and everything. I well, we dropped the ceiling, and there's about three feet between the ceiling and the old original ceiling. Yeah, that's all from my backyard. Yeah, I had it uh, uh, sawed and dried, and then I used it to make my furniture with. <laughs> Bus was As a matter of fact. That's one of his guns on the mantel there. Um, he, he just, the upstairs of the store was empty. And he made a bench up there. And he would go up there at his noon hour break or something and he would work on a gun. And he finally, matter of fact, I got the first gun he made down in the basement. But uh, uh, each time he made one, it came easier. And I think he made a about 10 or 12 of them. I mean, I've got three here. His sisters have all got one. And uh, he sold a couple to a fella. And uh, I don't know how many he has at home, but they're, uh, uh, he did a real nice job. And my clock out there, if you notice the top of it, he did that carving on it. At that time, they were, had mechanical watches, and I just had boxes of watches for repair. I mean, it's just impossible to keep up with them. 
So I concentrated on that. But when, um, when I sold the business to uh, Tom Cunningham, uh, we had a five-year agreement that I wouldn't go miss. And Bus was working for these builders, you know, as a handyman. And he kind of decided he might like to uh, go in the store. So he went to a school where they taught them jewelry repair. And he was all prepared, so when our five-year agreement was up, we reopened the store, and then Bus and I, I did the, I did the mechanical work, and he did the jewelry work. Tom ran into the same problem I did. I mean, the retail business just faded away because of the internet and the big box stores and everything, and uh, people just went there instead. They can't fix stuff. Well, that's what kept us going, was our service work. Gosh, Joyce, there were times when we would have to go over to the bank every day because we had, we had a good business. We tried. We tried real hard to uh, uh, treat people. And uh, I never believed in discounts. I always figured you'd get everybody the fair price, the same price, but uh, that that didn't work anymore. I mean, people love that word discount. Out of all our time in business, we only had one person accuse us of changing a stone. And uh, uh, she reported us to the police department and the policeman came up and he said, I know the story, but he says, we have to check it out anyway. We had good people. I mean, the people that came in our store were all good people. We never had any problems with somebody say, well, you cut me a deal, or uh, they apparently trusted us. Real legitimate people. They, they, uh, wanted to see you come back and so they treated you right yep my first thanksgiving in my house when everybody was coming yeah i woke up in the morning got ready to turn the oven on to put the turkey in and my oven didn't work and i called my dad and i was bawling and i said to dad mm -hmm. i said i'm gonna have to bring my stuff out to the house I can't have Thanksgiving this year. My oven doesn't work. He said, give me 10 minutes. This is like 6.30 in the morning. And I'm thinking, what's 10 minutes going to do? So he called me back, and he said, just hang tight. He says, taken care of. He hung up the phone. Got this raw turkey sitting here. Yeah. Pretty soon there's a knock on my door. <laughs> and there's Dell. Yeah. And I think Kurt was eight years old. Yeah, yeah. And he's helping his dad roll in me a loner so that I can cook so Thanksgiving could. dinner yeah. and we'll worry about the rest on Monday. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are the days I That's, remember. Yeah. Yeah. Most businesses were that way. Uh, you know, they, they were eager to keep you coming back. Uh, I always remember um, uh, somebody... At the time, they were trying to revamp Hull and bring it back. Uh, all it's referred to when the Tin Man came to town because they put all that granite stuff on the buildings, you know, and, uh, to cover them up. Gosh, I, um, I don't go in any stores anymore. Uh, usually, I stop in and say hello to Kurt. Uh, but um, uh, there isn't anybody else I know to say hello. I, oh, of course, I go in the girls' store all the time. Uh, but uh, uh, other than that, there just aren't any stores around that uh, I am acquainted with. Oh, Joyce, we used to have a, a barber shop next door, and did you ever know Jack Shin? Oh, Jack was a character. I mean, uh, uh, he he's always stirring something up. 
He he could upset the politicians, and but he was quite a he was a character. I almost got a real kick out of Jack. Um, but you know, we had barber shop down in the basement. Uh, then we had a barber shop in the other half of our store. And, uh, oh, let's see, I don't know, we had probably half a dozen barber shops downtown. Bail Airs was up, uh, do you remember Bail Airs? Yeah. He was up behind the First National Bank before they tore it down. I remember him more for Christmas trees than a barber yeah. shop. Yeah. And then there were um, several beauty salons around town, a lot of them, but uh, uh, of course everything's restaurants now, restaurants, are, but uh, that's understandable because the retail business has gone to pieces and restaurant business is good. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that was, uh, uh, I remember so plain because Dwayne Meyer was an auctioneer. And I tell you, more people requested that auctioneer song when that radio station opened. <laughs> uh, when I was a kid, I went to the Methodist Church, which was over on the corner of Walnut and Sibley. Then I remember the Baptist Church over, that was an old wood frame building, a great big steeple on it. But they uh, tore the church down and built a new one. And then the jail, the original jail, Joyce, was a really a, uh, uh, it was, originally it was a big house. It was one I apparently uh, belonged to one of the McPhersons or somebody, but it, of course they had to modernize and tear it down and shut the street off. Remember when the street was shut off there? Uh, I always remember this young fellow, uh, one winter, a friend had a car, and I think there were about six of us in the car, and we were ramming around the country shooting fireworks. And it was in the winter, it was cold. And we drove down by Shemung Lake, and we got stuck in a snowbank. But we didn't have any trouble getting it out because, you know, there were six of us and we heaved it out. But then we started up uh, on Golf Club Road and we turned onto Hughes Road and there was a guy standing there with a rifle. Stop! Stop! And we stopped and here a police car pulls up behind us. What are you guys doing? Who are you, who are you shooting at? And. Uh, we got out of the car and they went all through the guy in the car and the guys had stuffed the firecrackers under the back seat. They lifted the seat and but he lifted it up and said, okay, and what a disappointment. He said, Oh Jesus, it's fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> but they took us up to the jail and gave us a talk about uh, uh, how we should be good boys and all that sort of stuff, but more or less to scare us rather than to, they didn't do anything. It, but it was just kind of a, uh, an event you'll never forget. <laughs> that one fellow never let me forget that. Even when we built this house, he stopped in one day and he reminded me of, he was the guy that was standing on the corner with the rifle, but he, he reminded me of that event. <laughs> uh, I have, uh, a secretary that they gave me, and I have a diary that tells about how they picked that secretary up from the sawmill that was up on uh, uh, South Michigan Avenue and uh, is it Livingston Street. In that corner, apparently, there was a sawmill because they tell about picking up this secretary at the sawmill at Christmas time in the diary. <laughs> that sit over here at the edge of the woods. Uh, and it, uh, do you remember Ben Herman? Did you ever hear of Ben? He had a, uh, a clothing store uptown and he he sold Boy Scout equipment. And Mr. Hardman owned the land. 
So between Mr. Hardman and Ben Herman, they built this little cabin for the Boy Scouts uh, on retreat where they could go out and be in the woods and uh, fool around. But uh, finally that faded out. I don't know why. But um, I went over to see Ben one day and well, he said, you can have that building if you want, if Mr. Hardman will let you have it. So I went to see Mr. Hardman, and he said, sure, I'm well, glad to get it out of there. So I took it apart, and I moved it over here. You took and it apart? I, yeah, it was, um, uh, it was a log building, and I um, took the roof off, but the walls were all one piece. You know, I had a little tractor, and I hooked on the front end of the tractor and drove them over here and set them back up and put the roof back on. And uh, uh, it's still out there. <laughs> but, uh, um, and I've certainly got a lot of use out of it. We rented a cottage on Shemung Lake once and a friend and I were out in this little boat. He was driving it and I was in the back end trying to tune the boat, tune the motor and make it run faster and he hit a wake from another boat and that thing shot up in the air and I went over the back. I went around the rear end of the boat. Well, he, uh, he was alert enough to cut the engine and turn around and pick me up. But, uh, uh, and you know, that kind of, uh, I kind of gave up my boating after that deal. What possessed you to build a boat? Well, it was a kit and I bought it from a fella from Cecil Curtis. Do you ever remember? Cecil had a clothing store next door to us oh, uptown, okay. a men's clothing store. And he had this boat that he'd started and he said he'd never finish it. And so I bought it from him and I finished it up. And uh, it was it was kind of a neat little boat. We used to putz around in it, but the motor, boat. the motor was a little too big for the boat. And uh, uh, that was an experience that uh, uh, you never want happen again, so I was never really excited about boats anymore. That's an interesting uh, family, Joyce, the Peavy family. Boy, I tell you, they, they're spread out and there's more relatives there than I think anybody else in the area. That, uh, uh, her first husband, started the dairy where they sold milk. They had a milk route and they delivered milk around town. And then she remarried to a uh, man named Uptograff. And they changed the name. It was Watson and Uptograph for a long time. Uh, and then they, uh, uh, when the milk business, I don't know what happened where they're I don't really know what, but then she started a bakery there. And gosh, she had uh, uh, bars like low bars sitting around and she was busy all the time. I mean, we used to go over there and have coffee and maybe a sweet roll or something. And uh, uh, But uh, she had a good thing going there. Did you ever have a seat at the round table? Uh, only over at the, remember the spinning wheel restaurant? Yes. They had a round table there where um, uh, there was all us guys sitting around it, and I used to go over there. Uh, but I never went over to the family restaurant. Mike Yost told us how um, most of the city business was conducted there prior, uh, to, the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. prior to the Open Meeting Act. Uh, I well remember when the post office used to be on the corner of uh, Sibley and... South Michigan. That building sits empty now. It's been empty. Uh, Pam Shaw moved salons over there for a while. I uh, I remember going to there into that post office many a times. Good nose was the the shopping place. That was a um, uh, dry goods store. They had uh, material for making dresses and they, they had the shoe department and it just was kind of a general store. Yep. 
dancers was um, originally uh, uh, Pierce. Uh, Pierce, uh, I think um, Sneed, Herb Sneed bought Pierce's out. And then uh, dancers took him over. I don't know what he called it. I think he just went under the name of Pierce. Wes Kruger had a grocery store where um, uh, Moe's, that was a grocery store. And then Larkin had a grocery store across the street. Jeez, uh, I think there's uh, uh, an insurance business in there now. Well, I can always remember my dad telling a story about Ford Johnson. Did you ever know Ford Johnson? I can remember my dad telling about Ford had an old Model T car and he would drive through town and he'd jump in the back seat and let the car go through town. <laughs> <laughs> Willie Wright. Willie, he, uh, uh, everybody kind of tried to take care of Willie. You know, he, um, I don't know how to, he, he just was an icon around town and he washed Window. windows and uh, uh, always ate a bag of popcorn. Uh, uh, but other than that, he just didn't do anything. <laughs> Fred Server. Fred, he was something else. They always claim he'd chop a hole in the ice and go swimming. Uh, and and uh, he was always on the run, always. He was, uh, I think he was well in good shape, but he had a long beard and the, he lived, uh, do you know where the uh, uh, launch, boat launch is on Roosevelt Street? He lived right across there in uh, kind of a dingy house. Somebody has fixed it all up now, but uh, yeah, Fred was uh, always visible, always running on uh, or jogging, moving fast. Um, I don't know if he ever worked. I don't think he ever worked. Back to this Morgan farm family, Joyce. Um, ben Morgan was a very talented man. He could paint, as you've seen his and he made violins. Uh, he, they had this big farm. It was, it was a big farm at one time. But uh, uh, Ben kind of was more interested in his other talents than farming. So the farm kind of began to run down. And then his son Harry, who uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if Harry ever did anything, but he, uh, uh, things just went all to pieces. The buildings fell down and the house began to get run down. And uh, when I bought it, they had 24 acres left, but they took all that expressory ramp and everything off of the farm. Um, somebody called me one day and said, hey, the house is on fire over there. And they went over and uh, somebody had set fire, torched it, because a friend had a tractor sitting over there and they stuffed a bunch of weeds under the gas tank and lit them, but they wouldn't burn. But they were gonna uh, burn the tractor up too. But uh, uh, the bricks on that house went all over. Uh, people picked them up and used them for sidewalks and the, I used the bricks on the front of our store uptown came from there. And the house was ruined after they burned it. It was um, a solid brick house, solid brick walls. Uh, it was a good house, but it, uh, it was just, Right, kind of run down. 
Oh, gosh, Joyce, I, um, I never did anything really exciting. I just was the general run of a young boy, you know, and down to the lake and spent my time. Uh, I used to mow lawns for people and uh, just, I, ne I never had a real exciting life. It was just uh, what boys do, you know. <laughs> fool around. <laughs> All I got is a cell phone and I don't know how to use that. I answer it, yes, but uh, I'm pretty happy right here out in my yard. Uh, I'm, I'm not a socializer. Um, I do church events, but as far as the uh, social uh, I just, I'm not interested in that. Well, and you're too busy. Well, it's my personality, Joyce. I, I sort of prefer to be alone. Well, then you and Betty were a perfect match. Well, in some cases. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the store, she she always had a smile. She always oh yeah, her. she was she was excellent in the store. She could uh, uh, she could make that bank book balance. If it didn't balance, she found out why. Uh, she was very good with people. So tell me about your move. Well, I bought this house at Pentwater. It's right in town. Uh, it's a ranch style house similar to this and uh, I'm going to move the first day of July. Oh really? Yep. Is the house for sale? This? No, my daughter's going to move in here. Which one? Dorothy. Oh is she? Yeah, she's going to move in here. Of course, um, this was her home. She was raised here. I'm kind of excited about this move, Joyce. It's uh, uh, something new, something different, and Pentwater is really a neat little town. Uh, and uh, did you ever see the ice build up on the lake shore in the winter? You mean when it, when it when the wind blows it up and stacks yeah. it? Yeah. Have you? Mm -hmm. I first time I ever saw that was I think three weeks ago. And I couldn't believe it when I saw the mass of ice built up around the shore. It uh, like great big hills. And then, of course, they claim they have the ice caves where the water will wash around and create caves. Yep. Uh, then they, uh, they have an art center up there. This is a real large building, uh, kind of a factory-like building, and they have all kinds of woodworking machinery. I mean, anything you want to use, they've got. And they got a metalworking department, and then all around the edge of the, room, the building, they have rooms and for people to do crafts. And you buy a membership, and you can go in there anytime you want to and do anything you want to. Use the machinery and... So you're uh, going to go up there and fix clocks? Sure. Well, huh. I don't know about fixing clocks, but uh, uh, it, it's just a place you don't have to do anything. You can go in there and just visit or watch people if you want to. But it's only three blocks from my house. Did I ever tell you about the... I was walking out to Hall Hardware one day and... Uh, a lady called the store, asked Bus if he knew where I was. <laughs> I got quite a kick of that out, but it was my neighbor who lives up the street here. And she was just concerned about me, <laughs> well, I knew where I was going or not. <laughs> well, it made me feel good, Joyce. At least somebody was watching out for watching me. Out.